How's it going, guys? Joe McDonough here for CagesidePress.com. I'm joined by Mr. Vendetta, uh, Vince Morales. Vince, how's it going, man? Doing good, man. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good, and I appreciate the time. Um, talk to me first. I believe, and I could be wrong, correct me if I'm wrong, first pay-per-view, uh, UFC pay-per-view for you. Yeah, exactly. I was literally <laughs> just talking to somebody about that. Um, yeah, I'm stoked. And does that add, I mean, like you said, you're stoked. Does that add a little extra excitement? Um, I mean, first off, because in this day and age, a pay-per-view means you're actually going to have fans. You're not going to be in the apex right, right. Um, with no fans. But also just, you know, maybe more eyes, uh, bi- you know, bigger bigger fights, everything. Just, you know, a little bit of everything bigger with pay-per-views. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, like, the, the, on- the only downside is it seems like the performance bonuses are going to be harder to get, especially when you got people like Derek Lewis on the card and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and also, but but in uh, retrospect, recently on pay per views, Dana's been bumping it up to seventy five k. I don't, you know, I don't know if that's gonna happen uh, here. But I mean, it could be harder to get, but it could be worth because it could be uh, it could be worth it because it's the extra twenty five k. I don't know. Yeah, man. Fingers crossed. I mean, uh, that's just more motivation. I already know that I got to make a big statement this go around anyway. So absolutely, that's, man. That's just more reason to do it. And we'll talk about this one coming up. But you know, it's been. Um, about uh, actually over a year, I think you last fought end of May in 2020. Is that correct? So, um, been a little bit over a year, um, just about a year since you've got in there. Uh, I'm sure co- uh, COVID and everything did not help out um, getting you in more active and everything. Just talking about this last year, what it's been like for you? Uh, it's been a little rough for the most part. Uh, so, literally. When, co- when all the COVID stuff went down, I was, I was trying to get a fight at that time. Um, that all went down. So me and my girlfriend actually ended up packing up things and going back to uh, Idaho for, for a little bit, just because family and all that. Yep. Um, and we had a place where we could go work out every now and then. Um, so we left Vegas for a couple months, went back home, uh, went and actually started working. I started doing some landscaping for this, for one of my buddies. And uh, well, just because I had to, I was at a point where I just needed some money to get by. And then, uh, and then I got that offer to fight Gutierrez on 10 days notice, which I was stoked for, actually. Um, it was it being short notice. We were going back up to 45. So mm-hmm. um, in my mind, I had more knockouts at, at 45 than I do at 35. So I was like, okay, cool. Like, should be fun. Um, didn't work out. <laughs> but uh, anyways, at, after the fact, we, get, we came right back to Vegas. And um, I was dealing with a little bit of injury from the fight. I had fractured my, uh, my orbital in the first round. And then I was just getting back to training, um, just kind of settling back in with things at Syndicate, and I ended up tearing my Achilles. So it, it sidelined me for a good, I think I was at seven months or seven or eight months before I was back to training again. So that was a little, the, the, the forced perspective, and now the fact that I had to look at things from the sidelines and, and still find a way to visualize and, and take in information, I think that was kind of a, that was an interesting challenge that I think kind of helped my overall game. But uh, other other than that, the whole process was very difficult. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm sure it's going to make this fight feel that much better uh, going through all of that, you know, injury after injury, fights falling through, all that stuff. I'm sure you're just super excited to get to August 7th. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've, I've been amped up. And this is my – so all my other fights, aside from my fight with Eamon Zahavi, were all uh, short notice. Yep. So I got, I've had a full camp for this one, which is nice. Um, let, let some things settle in, let some tact- tactics develop, let some strategy kind of play in. Uh, it's been great. Yeah, I'm, su- I'm super I'm super excited. It feels like a long time coming. Absolutely, man. And I'm excited to see, uh, you know, what we get out of you from, from a full camp because it's super exciting when you're on short notice, so it's only going to be better. Yeah, yeah. Now tell me, you know, you're on a two-fight skid here, but like you said, yeah. it's been short notice opportunities. Uh, do you feel like your back's against the wall in a sense, or um, like you need a win here, but or because there were short notice opportunities, you kind of did the UFC a solid. And, and if it doesn't go your way, you know, um, do you feel like you you may get it released? Uh, I'm tr- I'm treating it like my back's up against the wall. I I, th- I think uh, I put myself in that position. I mean, nobody told me to, nobody forced me to take those short notice fights. Yeah. I'm, I'm all about it. Um, if I had to run things back, I, I guarantee you, I'd still r- do it the same way. So. Yep. Um, I put myself in this situation. Um, I know I know my back's up against the wall. I'm ready to prove that I, that I belong in the division. I'm ready to make a statement. So um, I'm using that just as more motivation. And do you feel like a a uh, Vince Morales with his back against the wall is the most dangerous version of yourself? 
I think just any any version for the most part is gonna you're gonna get something dangerous from me. It, <laughs> is, is how I feel. Uh, in 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 terms of my mental aspect, yeah, I I think I think that can make me kind of force me out out of that shell a little bit. So. Um, yeah. And that's, that's what I was going to ask next is, you know, some fighters, when I talk, you know, if they're on a skid or something, there's pressure, there's nerves, like I need a win. Other mm-hmm. fighters say they they love it. And it like you just said, it breaks you out of that shell. It's like, mm-hmm. I've got nothing to lose here. I need to prove something to myself, to the fans, to the UFC. Um, it sounds like that's the kind of the, the mentality you're having. 100%. And, and MMA doesn't really, that MMA doesn't care how much I think I need this, this win. It cares about the work. So mm-hmm. I, I know that I I've been putting in work this whole time. Uh, I know the position I'm in. That's just like I said. It's just adding to it. So I'm I'm looking to show everything that I can to really to really make a statement. And, and talk to me about Rodriguez. You know uh, what's exciting about this opponent, this matchup. Um, you know what are you looking for? Uh, so one thing one thing I've kind of noticed just watching some some film on him, which is something new for this camp because normally I don't do yeah. that much, but I have dug in a little bit. Uh. He reminds me of myself a little bit. Um, tends to be pretty good everywhere. He's kind of tough everywhere. He's not going to be easy to put away. That's a. These are all things that I kind of put in my basket as well. So I think I think we match up really well. I think uh, it's going to be an exciting fight, really. And that has a uh, seventy-five k bonus written all over it. <laughs> yeah, let's go. <laughs> hopefully, you know. Uh, mm-hmm. Hopefully, you know. You'll you'll have to say something to Mister uh, Mister Dana White since Tony Ferguson yeah, won't right? be there yeah. to, to egg him on. But uh, yeah, you got to say something. Um, now, tell me, kind of moving back and forth from you know, like you said, short notice featherweight, bantamweight, all this stuff. Is the goal to remain at bantamweight? Or are you kind of open to mixing and matching in the future? Uh. I, I never say it's fully off the table, but for now, if I'm getting a full camp and 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 things are going the way they should, then I should probably be be at 35. I'm not the biggest. I'm still not the biggest 35er. I know I'm not going to be the biggest 45er. Um, the only way that 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 would kind of make it make sense is if everybody wanted to jump up, and then now I'm fighting 45ers at 35, where we're all <laughs> much more healthy. So yeah. um, that would make sense. But for now, I think I think I do have to level the size playing field. As much as I don't like to cut weight, um, I think that's got to be a part of being a yeah. professional in this day and age. Absolutely, Vince. I can't wait for this one. Uh, Fight of the night written all over it. Thank you very much for the time, man. Oh, yeah, man. I appreciate it.